No, it's an actual question. This is interactive. Cold spots. Exactly. Uh, Done. Yeah. Distinguish between a real person and a... Cold spots. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Cold spots. So you guys should be able to see me in there. I'm the red, orange, and yellow guy. Sorry, fellas. But what's that mean, London? You're the hottest thing in the camera. Yep. She's stealing all my jokes tonight. So... You told me to steal that one. I know. Uh, yeah. Now, what are we looking for in here? Literal blue and black spots to start moving on their own or to start taking shape on their own. So this is a real FLIR Pro. This is what firemen use to actually help save people. This is the real deal here. Um, we're also already recording. We will do a few starts and stops on this because as great as the hardware is, the software sucks. So if we record for too long, we'll lose footage and we don't want to do that. The other thing is when you get your recording back, there's a blue dot bouncing around the screen. That blue dot is giving us the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. So it's going to help guide your eye when you're watching your video of where the coldest spot is actually going to be. So with that said, Joseph, this one was going to go to you because this is one thing I know you don't have. So throw that backpack back on your back, buddy. You're going to hold this right-handed kind of like this and that way the camera always stays on your left again it's already recording the red square means it's recording when i tell you to stop you'll tap it it'll turn to a circle when we start it again make sure you're in this position before you hit the record button otherwise it'll be upside down or sideways and then i gotta give out dad's phone number it's never fun Did so all he's got this <laughs> he's good he's got this this is why we record everything so let's get out the next crazy camera So this guy, obviously a lot different than the cell phone that I just handed out. Do a quick demo on this once I get plugged in. Doing great. Thanks. London's encouragement means the world to me, everybody. Even if it's sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think she gets it from? Hello. So you should not be able to see me in this tiny little GoPro right here. I know I'm showing you a black screen, very exciting. So let's turn on some lights. We are now working with infrared lighting, which is lighting you cannot see with your own eyes. The hope here is that we're going to be able to capture something we would normally not be able to see with our own eyes. This is light is coming from this torch right here at the top. You can see the red light at the top. So the hope here is that we're going to be able to capture orbs. We're also going to have an accompanying item to go along with this to detect any type of motion that's going to be able to come out of this guy. So this is a two-person job. I am going to start the recording on this. So reason being, is because this one likes to lock up and the new version of this is actually in the shop. So if it's going to lock up, we're gonna know right away and I'll be able to fix it right away so that way we don't lose too much footage. Sky, this one's gonna go to you. <laughs> yep, don't be afraid of it. It's got a little bit of weight to it. So I like to do this part just to make sure it goes to the right person. This is the Neuralizer from Men in Black. None of you are gonna remember anything by the time we're done. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, jokes, you're laughing, that's good. You're gonna have a good time. Lasers. We're using lasers to go along with the camera that I just handed Sky. The reason being is because this is gonna help us detect any motion that's actually gonna happen through the laser. So you can't see the lasers so something passes through it. It's gonna be fast and it might not be seen in real time. However, if we're not recording through these lasers, we're not going to be able to capture anything. So we're gonna be using two different style of lasers. Obviously the green circles. Hi. Um, I already have all my people. You're probably looking for Bulldog up the street. You're going to go up one block where those uh, burning gas lamps are and make a left. See why I ask all of your names? Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's where I already took off. Just saying. Ooh. The red squares. The reason why we actually have this one is because when we capture something here, I'll be able to take the still from the video and put it in 3D software and give you a full 3D view of what we caught along with measurements of what's actually inside of the lasers. So I've had this guy for about a year. The 3D software has not been able to take anything yet because it's been just a hair or two blurry. So again, hopefully tonight is our night and we're going to be using these two side by side. So, Kimberly, these ones are going to go to you. <laughs> no pressure at all. No pressure. No pressure at all. You definitely want to keep them on the ground unless of course I direct you otherwise. And when you're using them on the ground, make sure a piece of it is touching your toe. So that's kind of, we want to keep them in control. Okay. So, and we're going to show you more about those at our next location. Okay. Don't cross the streets. Don't cross the streets. Somebody got the jig. Nice. Uh, let's see. Spear boxes. Aha, uh -huh. yes. I got your attention now, didn't I? <laughs> I have six different spear boxes. They all do something a little bit different than the next one. I do have one set of twins, though. Um, so, spear boxes, if you're unfamiliar with them, basically ways for us to communicate with the dead. 
if you're watching your TV shows, this is basically a radio sweeper with all of the white noise, and then Zach Bagans throws you the BS he thinks he heard in the middle of the screen, trying to convince you it of the same like thing. Zach Bagans. Yeah, right. It just says Zach three times. Right. So yeah. we're going to be using multiple styles of this with different methods. The method we're going to be using with these is that they're slowed down. None of you are trained to listen to white noise for two hours at a time. Somebody is going to fall asleep. Along with the history I'm going to give, Pat, you would definitely fall asleep. So, with that said, I, w I want, because this, this is what it's going to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Notice I'm going group by group by group. Okay, this works. Yeah. So, with that, the radio chatter will come through, and that's what we're actually listening for. We're looking for conveyed messages of radio chatter to be able to send, like tell us what's actually going on inside that space. So, with that said, song lyrics, DJs, commercials. If you hear, welcome to Charleston, buy a Kia today, I want to know that you heard, welcome to Charleston, buy a Kia today. The word welcome or buy might actually mean something to the space that we're in. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. The cool thing is, is that this particular device is going to record the entire session for us. She's going to have an earbud in, so she's going to be the only one to hear it in real time. I'll be recording what she hears oh, in real time. And I will also be spot checking this tomorrow morning, so that way you'll have my notes plus whatever Cat heard in real time. If it's relevant, I'll obviously give you the link to why it's relevant. So, I'm so ear excited. Cat, okay, your earwax is gross. You get to keep these. Okay, so it's pretty you'll have to see. undo the, the twist tie. He's like, I can't do that. You don't even clean your ears, so I don't want to hear it from you. Your volume button is right here. Uh -oh, it's fight, a wheel fight. at the very top. I'm making okay. sure it's turned all the way down. Don't hit the button. <laughs> So you know, okay, so I'm gonna physically feel for these because I can't see them. So this right. does what? That's gonna shut it off. Don't touch it. Don't it's touch the it. wheel next to it. Okay, so it's just the only thing you need to worry about is that wheel. This wheel. Yep. Where's the wheel? Next I'm to the sorry. button that you're touching. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Wait. Nope. I need help. So right. there's a wheel right where my finger is. Okay, yeah. Right. So I'm gonna turn it all the way down. Okay, and that's the volume. And that's the volume. That's the okay. only thing you need to worry about. It's already recording right now. Solid. Alright. I've never seen you do it. <laughs> so the next one is not going to record anything. So I'm going to be relying on the person that actually has it in their ear to tell me what they have oh, I'm going stupid. on with that. I was like, why can't I hear anything? Yeah, put the ear button. I know. So. I'm a Amanda, teacher. This one's gonna go to you. Okay. Lucky you, right? Yeah. The cool thing is, yeah, is that sure. the other so earbud will not be used. Yeah, so so that way fine. Joseph can listen in with you. Okay. So when yes, we're kind of walking in between spaces or I'll say I need you to listen for this, that way you guys can actually work together. Okay. So again, he might be able to help you out since he's already has one. Okay. So again, <laughs> earwax is gross, you get to keep those. Your volume button is the wheel at the top. That's good. So the there's a button there. Box. Again, yours isn't recording, so if you shut it off by accident, not a big deal, you're not gonna mess up the recording. I've never seen that type of spirit box before. The so do you wear one too? Yes. I've seen the SP7. Huh? The next spirit box we're going to be using... Ah, that's not what I want. There we go. We don't have to actually listen to it. So if you watch the TV shows, this is going to replace the yes. obelisk. So this is going to be able to give us words in the center of the screen from time to time. Mom, so the cool that? thing about that is it's going to save all those words with a timestamp right next to it. What this does is it's going to kind of give me, if it's relevant to our location, where to watch the video, where to listen to box recording all of those little extra things so yes sir i have that you have the I upgraded have. version with thirty-six thousand terms in it okay <laughs> <laughs> uh, <I win>. yeah. <laughs> what app is that this is called ghost hunting tools nice. so i just cleared Good out work. the last tour that i had so we're going to start off fresh so everything that shows up on this guy is not going to be relevant 80% of this is going to be garbage. I'm just going to put it out there. It's the other 20% that's going to be relevant to the space where we are, a person in history we're talking about, or something going on with one of us. The same way the other spirit boxes are working. So, Miss Renee, this one's going to go to you. Okay. So, I don't want to see every word that pops up. I will come to you when I want to take a look at the list. Otherwise, we'll be out here till like 5 in the morning. Okay. So. Who doesn't want to do that? I do. It's probably a dumb question, but like, is there a so is it sweeping through, like... Every single radio station. Okay. I don't hear. Is that... A, okay, cool. Cutter, your spirit box works completely different. Yours is going to sweep through both FM and AM radio stations at the same time. And it's going to attempt to take out box. the white noise that Kat and Amanda are listening to and only give us words. It doesn't always do that. However... You're only going to hear about 10 or 12 terms come out of this thing all night long. And they're going to be crystal clear. 
cool thing is, is that the three of you can use this together. Obviously, because there's no open air speaker, it's an open air speaker. The only thing you need to worry about is how to hold it. Blinking lights are the very top. On the right is a mute button. I push the mute button so I can kind of get through the rest of these. But again, that's the only button you need to worry about. That one goes to you, sir. Uh, let's see. This is what we, what this we, is what we did at Angel. Yeah. Nathan? Yes. Because she has an extra earbud, you're going to be like triple handed because she's going to want to share that earbud with you so you can both listen in. So I'm giving you two more easy jobs. Okay. So the first one is you guys have all seen these on television. These yeah. are pretty much yeah, a must yeah, have. Okay. And yeah. if it goes on, this is an electromagnetic field reader. So all I want to know is what color you're seeing. I already have the measurements memorized. I use this to debunk things. So again, we're going to measure it like if uh, that's a parking meter, that's a building, so forth and so on. So again, that one's nice and easy. You don't have to do anything with it. Just tell me what colors you see. Okay. And the other piece I'm giving you is a very simple point and shoot camera. Oh, there is no flash on this, which means when you're taking photographs, they have to be very, very still. Otherwise, they're going to be blurry. You might want to shoot some photos that are going through the lasers, other pictures of other touristy things. Yeah, Give me hundreds of photos to go oh, through. Oh, just literally just take yours. photos of yes. all night yeah, long. Yeah, selfies oh, will be okay. deleted, just so you know. So no goofy, I can, you know. <laughs> no, look at I'm me. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to get, get rid of those. Recording so, so be gross. No. there you go. Okay. Can you? Here. Joe, you look like a man that needs a little bit of proof. So you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a thumb on everybody's stuff. Here's what I'm giving you. So this is what we call a millimeter. This millimeter is actually going to use three different functions. The first thing that it has, and it has an electromagnetic field reader in it, just like Nathan's. Only yours is digital and way more accurate. Your numbers, your big ones, go anything above 2.5. I want to know what's going on. So again, that's kind of, I want to debunk things first. Joseph's camera, we'll be able to determine if he's actually seeing a cold spot or not because we have an ambient thermometer right here at the top. That's your bottom number, just so you know. It's just at the ready. You don't need to focus on it. The last thing that this has is it has a REM pod built into it. So if anything gets close to the antenna that I just pulled out, it will go off. I'm not touching it right now. So again, as I'm touching it, it's going to go off with a brighter color and obviously a higher pitch of a noise. We're going to talk more about that at our second stop when we start, start using it. So again, just kind of get used to how those numbers move around on your screen. Yes, I downloaded it. Mm -hmm. Alright. Everybody's all geared up, right? Yes, yes, all right. Sir. So Joseph's in charge. Go have fun. Let me know what happens. No, I'm kidding. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're you connected, paying attention. Dude. Good deal. All right. So. Hello, sister from another mister. When you have somewhere to put your water, you're gonna carry it on. I'm gonna carry. Okay. okay. I'm a big kid. What is this? All right. <laughs> so we start here for a reason, folks. Of course we do. The place behind me is haunted. So everybody got that text that said next to Big John's. I wanted to make sure you all knew exactly where to go because Big John's is haunted. You guys are going to make me talk all night, so I'm going to take a quick turn. <laughs> so, Big John's used to be owned by a football player. His name was Big John Kennedy. Obviously, this is his place. I can't imagine why they named it Big John's, because Big John owned it, but hey, whatever. Anyway, he played for the 1947 New York Giants. Whenever I'm giving you the history of a location or a space, I will always slow down on specific keywords for all of the spirit boxes you all are using. For example, this location will be obviously 47, New York, Giants, anything relatable to a bar, and the name John. So, with that said, he used to sit in the back of this bar and he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. One night, two guys come in, they're not old enough to drink. So he has the bartender throw them out. They leave pretty angry, but they come back the next night and they try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John sees what's going on, he slams down his beer and he gets up and just starts pounding on these guys, beating the hell out of them. A couple of gunshots go off, and John gets grazed in the neck, and the bullet lands behind him in the wall. After being shot, the only one that's been shot, by the way, he gets up, he goes back to the bar, tells the bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor, an ambulance. So, the irony of the story is normally if I tell you a building is haunted, your mind automatically thinks of some tragic happening and, and axe murdering kind of thing that we've already discussed, right? But nobody died in the story I just told you. So what's haunting the place? It's a bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. Even if the renovation of Big John's that we're looking at right now filled in that bullet hole, Big John's blood is still in this building. People that sit in the front of this building tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headache. This is kind of a heated warning story, which is why we start here on purpose. If anybody feels any of those symptoms tonight, I need to know immediately. Again, we're going ghost hunting. 
So and with that kind of space, I, I don't know how any of this is going to affect any of you because I don't know all of you like that yet. But again, we're gonna blame it on the humidity and the heat first, always, if you have those kind of symptoms. I'm not here to make things up or say, oh, everything's paranormal, I'm not Zach Bacon's. So, but with that said, you all looked at me like, holy crap, what did I just sign up for? So we're gonna move on. What do you think? That's not yeah. a great idea. Okay. Super, super good question, I'm sorry. Is there a way to like increase the speed that it sweeps? Because I'm getting like big chunks of like radio. So there is, um, but with the slower down message, these people, like my general group isn't used to listening to that. Most people think it's going super fast. You want me to speed it up for you? That would be awesome, actually. So, I'm gonna give me a little bit of like, you know. No. I surprised you have the SBA 7 spirit box. Yeah, but this recording is going to everybody. Oh. Uh, you see why I did that? So, I see. Button, so we're going to go up one more. Down, and we're going to keep it there. That's like at a mid range. Okay. So that way like everybody kind of gets it just. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this let's like get our mind off of so money might actually get sick on this tour. Same yeah, building. Have you guys been taking any kind of Charleston historical tours at all? Yes. Us. Oh, there's one. Yeah, we've done. All right. So we had a big earthquake here in 1886. So I kind of like to know where your guys' history lessons are at. Um, so I don't explain something a little too elaborate. But we had a big earthquake here. It's an anomaly for us because we're not supposed to have earthquakes. We're supposed to have hurricanes. This building is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. The white mantle you see in the middle of the building, a piece of it broke off from the front of the building, hit somebody in the back of the head and killed them. Ooh. They say you can see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street in the middle of the night. So. With that said, I say allegedly in a, a lot with that story because I don't have any proof. It's just a great segue, so nobody's thinking about getting sick on the tour, even though I just brought it up again. So, with that said, let's move on. Are you guys ready to go ghost hunting? Yeah. Oh, this noisy corner? Yes, I am too. I'm going to lose my voice if this keeps up all night. We get a walk. I mean, I can get my airplane yeah. with this match or box. Right? Think that'd be good? Like, when we come to a stop, I can pull it out. You gotta, you gotta stay with me, Mom. I'm interested in this, so I will be going fast. I've never, this thing is so heavy. Mom. Mama. This thing's heavy. Hmm? This thing's heavy. I'm having me. We're gonna need that on you to get the horse to the like the white horse. So. With that said, welcome to the Big Red Barn Lot. We are not going to spend a lot of time here. This is just so we can talk further about your devices. So, the history here is really simple. Well, first off, you should know this is where we keep some of the horses for your carriage rides. That's why you guys were already complaining about manure. I can't smell it. I'm out here seven nights a week. It, it's just a natural smell. Um, but the history here is really simple. It's a one-liner. It's just so it's used as an example for all of the different devices we're using. This is the same red barn that held horses that delivered milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. That's it. That's all I got. So, obviously the keywords here are going to be delivery, milk, eggs, anything relatable to a stable. So let's talk about the spirit boxes, because there are five of them in play tonight. I left the sixth one in my bag, because it's an old school style. Everybody wants to ask the same question whenever they get a spirit box or a Ouija board. What do you guys think that question is? Is there a spirit in there? Are you here, um, right? Is anybody here? Kind of mentality? Mm -hmm. If, um, let's see, who's got one? If Amanda hears the word no, that means somebody's here. So again, we will not be asking. What about yes? yes? It still means somebody's here. <laughs> so either way. We are not going to be asking yes and no questions all night long. So you're not going to get any paranormal proof out of yes and no questions, regardless of whatever TV shows are actually telling you. So yeah, we're going out for details. For me training people that have never used a spirit box before, I don't know some of you already have, I can already tell just by the way you're asking me questions about the ones you have already. Um, but with that, I tell people to ask questions they already know the answers to. For example, if somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. Obviously, you're looking and listening for the color red. I say looking because Renee has a word list. So, she's obviously not listening. She has to look for the word red. But the rest of you are using song lyrics and DJs to be able to convey messages back to us. The word red might not be available to them at that particular time to answer you. Fire truck, blood, heart. Those three things are specifically red, and I would take that as an acceptable answer. What color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good with that. However, most of the night, I'm going to require that there's at least two events to be able to verify each other before I'm going to claim anything of paranormal. Another example. 
let's say Renee's word list has the word art on it, and that doesn't mean anything in this location, because we're obviously talking about horses and football players. Um, but then Kat hears the number 40 on her spirit box. Together, Art Faircloth was number 40 on Big John's team. I got 40 just a few minutes ago. Did you really? Mm -hmm. I got DNA. I don't know what that's for. I downloaded the app. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's okay. Overachiever. No. It I'm just really all the time. excited. I know. Time, it's London that uh, has hers out because uh, I, gotcha. I gave her the upgrade uh -huh. too. So, I'm just the teacher's pet. Yeah, 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 I know. But again, that is very interesting that you had the number 40 show up, even though I used yours as an example for the word art. But you guys see how we're going to be putting clues together all night long and kind of going through this. Um, again, it's not going to be a, hi, my name's Big John, I played for the Giants. It's going to be a clue over here, a clue over there, and I'm going to be like, all right, so we have like three things, we might actually have something going on. And that could be an EMF reading, it could be something showing up on the cameras, whatever the case might be, minimum of two to be able to verify what the theme is for that specific location. Let's talk about the cameras. Um, that's probably going off because it's too close to the phone. Yeah, you're like, all my phone. There you go. All right, so, Joseph, you're going to try to do two things for us. Um, I already know I already told you with and cameras, I don't want you filming it. people, but I do want yeah, you to try to keep one of us in view at all times. The reason for it, we're going to be the warmest thing out here, our skin. So with that, it's going to give us an, an array of color on your screen, and it's going to be much easier to find the cold spots if we have a hot spot, like somebody's skin in view. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. The other thing you're going to try to do is keep the, the sky out of view. It's another reason why I like to give this to the shortest person on the tour, even though I'm pretty sure Kimberly has... Yeah, I think I got that. It's kind of a toss-up. Um, but the reason for that is because the blue dot will default to the sky looking for a surface. The sky doesn't have a surface. So, so with your camera, people in, sky out. That's the main ordeal for yours. Sky. <laughs> That's funny. You can keep this guy in, but that sky out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Use this sky, e. but not that one. Sky with the E. Not with the... <laughs> yeah. Kimberly, point one of your lasers on the ground for me. Perfect. So, I don't want you looking down at it because we already know what the circles are. You're literally going to step back like two steps, and that way your camera will kind of level out because we're looking for things in here. Okay? We're not looking at things going down at it in an anomaly kind of moving through. We want to see it going can this way where we would normally not be able to see anything. However, lasers aren't always a safe space. So again, I'll always give you the okay for those. Um, lasers also set off specific car alarms, so no pressure there either. They definitely stay off the vehicles. Um, I know, right? I want to go ring everybody's car alarm. I know. I don't like to run with nine other people. It's just that will. Interesting. Where are we at on your word list? I'm still at when. At when? It's been there forever. Okay. All right, so now that everybody has a better grip on their devices, except for Joe, because I'm going to work with him specifically because there's a lot more that goes into that motion sensor <laughs> um, at the next stop. So um, I say we go get away from football players and ponies and talk about some much deeper history. What do you think? Yeah. All right, let's go up this way. Let's do it. better our next spot. Yeah. Catch early in the night, so I'll reset it as we're walking. Is that like spirits taking energy or something? Well, the fact that you guys both stopped at the same time is a little uncanny because that normally doesn't happen. I wonder if it's when I turn on the spirit box off of you. Yeah, you gotta keep a purse in. This thing's like picture by picture, so it's like the picture got ran on the No, I think I just heard it was right. I think I just heard this on. Don't stop. Believe it. Don't go far away from me, please. A lot of rap. Keep intact. Oh, that was like a dog voice. I've never heard of this group, but I mean, I saw it on Ghost Stop or whatever, but. off spirit boxes while we're exploring the space I'm not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse like what we did over there with the big red barn I am going to withhold information from here going forward purposely so that way everybody has a genuine experience is that fair so what is this place 
This is the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion site. I know we're in a parking lot. So again, just another fair warning about cameras and vehicles. It's Saturday night. I'm actually surprised we have this much space in the backside of it, but we're not going to go in between vehicles to explore. We're not going to be filming, taking pictures, anything near a vehicle. So we're kind of limited to the center of the space, and I think that corner up there is empty too. Um, so who the heck were these people? Eliza and Charles had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three Charleses. Do you guys see why we look for a secondary clue now? So again, we need to know which Charles we're actually dealing with. But anyway, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. That's a pretty big deal for us. However, I hate politics more than all of you. We're going to move on. <laughs> so, with that, Eliza married Charles at a young age according to today's standards. If you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, it's not going to be like numbers like 12 and 14. It's going to be according to today's standards. Think young of today. Uh, the reason I bring this up is because Charles, her husband, was over double her age. There's a pretty big age gap back then in the colonial times, pretty big age gap now, just so you know. Um, but she married Charles because her father, who was over in England, thought he was dying, and he's trying to bring all of his kids home. She didn't think he was dying, so she stayed put and got married. It's 1744. You don't marry somebody for a green card because we're not even a country yet. So, yeah. Ah, see, somebody got that joke tonight. Heard a couple of chuckles out there. I don't normally get a laugh at that one. That was exciting for me. Thanks, guys. Not gonna lie, I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, so good job. Oh, she's heard all this a dozen times. <laughs> well, of course, they're gonna park right here. We're gonna speed down this way. That was the same year that they built the house. So where was I? She was right. Dad didn't die right away. So instead, Dad starts sending her gifts from England to where you're standing right now. One of those gifts happened to be seeds of indigo. You guys have all been in town for at least an hour or two. You've seen the word indigo in Charleston somewhere. I can guarantee it. Now, when she got it, she didn't know what to do with these indigo seeds. She had to learn from her slaves and her servants on how to keep it cultivated. It's not always hot here. So once she figured it out and experimented with it, she moves it to another plantation and then calls her father and says, we can actually make a killing with this indigo because the rice plantations are going downhill. So now we have an international businesswoman during colonial times. This is a huge ordeal. Now that's her business and the boring stuff. Let's get into the weird stuff because that's why you guys are all here. Mm. Uh, I'm going to go through kind of a, with, based on what spirit box you have. So Renee, I'm going to start with you. Um, you have the digital, the word list. Um, so there were two wives named Eliza back to back. The first wife, Eliza, died in January of 1744, and the one we just mm -hmm. talked about, he married in May of 1744. So first wife dies in January, five months later he's married again to a second Eliza. Ironically, both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. Find out which Eliza we're dealing with. So you also were getting numbers back there. Stick with the ages of when they were married too. We're going to keep it simple with yours. Um, so. Cat with yours, we're going to see what we can get out of the children for you. So great. Yeah. <laughs> now I already told you there was one child, his name was Charles. There are more. You can ask We are. You can ask how many kids and the names of them. Don't poke the bear with this one because there's a tragedy among the kids. If you poke the bear, all activity will stop. Jody, you have anything going on with your device yet? Um, and Nathan, you already have the other EMF, so I normally use that as an example where you have EMF. Those will stop if we poke the bear with that tragedy. So again, how many and what the names are and kind of keep it simple. Uh, Amanda and Joe. So the two of you are working together. Let's try to get this camera. With your I can't do set of questions, I want you guys to kind of focus on Eliza's death. How old she was, where she died, what she died from, and what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So again, lots of questions in that, but just think of her Say it death. Again. How old she was, okay. what she died from, where she's buried, okay. and what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. Okay. Where's the other one? Make it huh? Who's got this? Yes, you got it. So with yours, I want you to obviously focus on things that are simple, just because it's only going to give us one to two syllable okay. answers. The mansion's not here anymore. That's what happened to it, and when did that happen? So again, we're looking for a specific date. I'm sure you guys all noticed by now, we are not going after yes and no questions tonight. So again, you all have specific questions, and those are focus questions. If you go rogue, that's fine. But just kind of keep in mind, we're going to wait for those direct responses to see if it's actually relevant to our space. Those of you with cameras, again, nice slow movements between the lasers and the IR camera. 
and then do the same thing with you. The slower you go with that, the better off we're going to have with a video that we're going to actually be able to watch instead of a lot of bouncing around kind of thing. So Sky and Joe, it's up to you guys to give us a nice steady camera. And as far as your lasers go, keep them nice and steady right in front of you, one or two at a time. It doesn't matter, up to you. But we are going to explore the space. I'm going to work with Joe for just a few minutes so I can show him more about his device. Um, but the rest of you, spread out, have some fun. We're going to stay within this space right here. Is the name Rob relevant? No. No? I will tell you, using both of those together is going to kind of take the focus off of that. So okay. again, I'm just kind of putting it out there because I've seen, you know, I see this all the time. We can go over in that corner. Okay. Ow. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to use some of my corner. He wants to use some of his, but he needs to get it hold to his. No, I can use this with one hand. It's fine. All right. So, Joe, I need to work with you on your particular device. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, definitely. 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 You need to keep someone in it, he said. You want to put me in it? In the okay. camera? Uh, I'm going to have to take this out of my ear, then we're going to get separate. Because what? We put the show. So you have to hold on to this equipment with two hands. I'm not going to tell you again. I'm trying to take my back. Oh, it's getting heavy. Okay, I'll hold it for you. You gotta keep a person in it. Do you wanna put me in it? You're the only person in here. Figuring it out? Yeah, I'm trying. Get my way. What are these white dots that keep popping up on the screen that like make shape or something? Uh, like where? I keep seeing it. You see it right there? That side? Yeah, it's trying to like identify an object. Oh, okay. So. So this used to be a mansion here? Yeah. So the house came up to about where that tree is, and then it was the garden, and then the safe quarters in the back. Usually you don't get it. Usually you don't get stuff on thermal. It's actually kind of rare to get stuff on thermal. Huh? It's actually kind of rare to get stuff on thermal for ghosts or spook that one. You have to take an energy from like batteries and devices and stuff to actually like spook and stuff. So usually that's why because they have to do a lot of energy. I need a cat to play with. A spirit cross is well, it tries to. It's just for heat. Huh? It's just for heat. That's what? It's just for heat, right? 
I keep pointing at this red barn because he was talking about that earlier. Shaking the seat so heavy. Now we hold it for a little bit and you hold this. And you can ask him. It's like he assigned us. Okay. Is that a window up there? Because I think something just moved across it if that's a window. Yeah, I think it was around that barn. I'm not joking. I'm serious about ghost hunting. So I was looking at that thing where that blue dot is, right? See that? And like, a blue or like, really something went across it, I feel like. I don't know, like, is it a window is what I'm looking for. Alright, Manny, you get anything out of there? I don't know what I'm supposed to be getting. I don't think so. <laughs> she, okay. I tried teaching her to the essence message. Right. Yeah. And just like I just explained to Kat, I want you to hear those radio stations, okay. no matter how silly you think it might be. Okay. If the song Drop It Like It's Hot comes through, yeah. I want to know that you heard Drop It Like It's Hot. Okay. Because the word's hot. About damn like, time. I heard that one a minute ago. Exactly. <laughs> so again, that's what we're looking for. Okay. Those, and it's going to be specific details. Now, okay. at the beginning, you're going to see me ready down pretty much everything that you're listening for. Okay. Or that what you're telling me you're hearing, just so that can kind of just of how you listen to it. Okay. But afterwards, I'm like, yeah, that's a little vague. I'm waiting for something else. And we'll kind of see what pops up with it. Okay. It, like it's about damn time is really vague. I don't okay. know that that's a direct response. Okay. You see where I'm going with that now? Yeah. Um. So you're just trying to hear what's being picked up through like frequencies. Huh? Exactly. You, okay. And it could be a disembodied voice too. We never know. Okay. I don't know. And it was. I think it, there's a window here, but where that blue dot was, I think something just went across it. Were you recording it? Obviously, the whole time. Yeah, it was recording. All right. So do me a favor so we don't lose it. Okay. Let's stop the video. I'm gonna splice all these videos together and this way I kind of know where to look. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. You got it. What'd you got, Nani? I got nothing. What you got? Something I think just moved across the window a couple of minutes ago. Like, you see those three, four windows that. Yeah, the but bottom? you gotta keep it all the person and say it. I've already no, told him that 10 million She now. was in the video. Uh, Dad was walking across, I think, too. That means mom. Don't look behind me, please. This is a cool experience. <laughs> actually working. Now you see why I want to buy stuff? Now you see how useful this stuff is? Now you see what I'm talking about. Chill out. You remember when you used to creep me out? Hold on, let me... I gotta be ahead of you a little bit. I mean, if you want to switch, I would actually kind of like it because this thing is not that strong. I swear, I think I just heard the word C. C? C? I'm gonna, I want to ask yeah. him if we can switch because I'm good with speed boxes. Maybe I can, t he was just talking about the spirit box I have. Maybe I can tell him I have one. Okay. This is my indigo seeds a while ago and I just heard seed on here. No, you did? Yeah. I got, like, did it go? You're supposed to be listening. Her? No, you, ha you had to be in front of me, remember? Company. I heard company. I heard company, man. I heard company. Did you remember how they said that they were making deals?
how are we supposed to do this? Like, I gotta get you in, you said. And it's why, do you hear that? I heard that too. <clears throat> oh god, I pulled it up later. This is hard. I wish the, the wireless headphones connected to that so it could be around. And look for like breezes. Like if you feel breezes go across you. I mean I'm not the ghost hunter myself. I've been the Andy's end. But... I like how he stops and actually lets people investigate. I'm glad he's not like Alright, you know, you just get the equipment to get it, you know what I mean? Dad has a grandpa, you know what I mean? How many children did you have? I don't know. I'm going to say. That scared me so bad. Did that scare you? Can you get anything out of there now? Nothing yet? It said rice. It said rice? No, it said right. seed. I see. Seed. Oh, seed. I'm sorry. What's funny is the word seed would normally show up on the word list all the time while we're here. So it's yeah. funny that you guys heard it on that one. You get the laugh. What did you say? I said rice. <laughs> Not rice. Seed. Boom. Seed. Might as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, All right, so oh, no other numbers, colors, anything coming Nine out of there? Nine and a half, just a second. Nine and a half. Take it. That's probably gets like. Talking about rice earlier. Yeah. 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 All right. Now this word list is gone. Where did we go? We're starting to get used to like how to listen to these spirit boxes and the different methods that obviously that I'm trying to teach you on how to go through them. Um, the, the best thing we've seen so far was obviously a 15.4 uh, reading that came out of the Mel meter. So to kind of give you an explanation of what these readings mean that are coming out of Nathan and Joe's devices. Um, and am I getting names correct, by the way? I do Nathaniel. prefer Nathaniel, Nathaniel. but Nathan's easier. Okay. okay. My best. Uh, but behind your television set, you have a bunch of wires. So if you were to put one of those two devices behind your TV, uh, Nathaniel's is actually going to spike out because it actually goes, it's normally about a 40 to 60 milligauss reading. So that would be a digital number that you would see on Joe's. Um, your microwave running on high is going to run between 150 to 170. So again, and that's with you standing next to it and the door is closed. The highest I've ever seen Joe's device go to has been in this space at 214 milligauss. It's almost as bad as putting your head inside the microwave while it's running on high. So again, these are dangerous levels, just so you guys know. Those of you running the cameras that I handed out, you can feel free to stop them and kind of give your hands a break. So, Joseph, go ahead and hit the square on yours. And then, of course, you want to hit that top button so it stops flashing. So that way I have a marker where to look for it, right at the end of a specific slice. And if you have a geologist friend, I would love to chat with them because I have another project going on. I need to do the Sorry, that. Wow, okay. Yeah, so, all right, let's head out to the next alley and see what we got. Oh, we were just being children. Um, so, we got Army after cadence and then that. <laughs> but um, what is your podcast called? Is what it's I want to ask thing. you. It's the same thing. Stories in a Cemetery. And it'll be at the top of your oh, okay. page. Nice. Everybody asks about it because that's where all ghost tours coming in and ghost tour. So, um, I'm actually going to wait for this family to pass so it doesn't seem like I'm shouting over top of them. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What's going on, Betty? 
saying? We're just chilling. We got to find up Yeah, we all got crazy gear. We're good. <laughs> all right. So, there's a doctor that moves down here from Rhode Island. He moves down here because his fiance Amanda just inherited a bunch of money. Like, so whenever I get somebody with the same name as somebody in a story, I get excited because sometimes that'll stir things up. So, uh, like a trigger opt. A trigger? Oh, I do. Very interesting. What? Joseph Brown Ladd was actually engaged to Amanda. The hey, doctor's name was Joseph him? Brown Ladd. So, <laughs> he has the same name as me, and they're married, so. So, yeah, very cool stuff. You want us to walk down the, down the alley together? Let's wait until the story's <laughs> over. That would be good. So Joseph Amanda just inherited name. all this money, and she has an attorney helping her out with this because her parents are dead and deceased. Again, that's where the money came from. It was an inheritance. The attorney thinks that the doctor is just after Amanda's cash. So he tells Amanda, get rid of the doctor. So he's just after your money. To prove that he's not, he moves into Charleston. So as he's coming into town, the coachman set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a very good start to his stay in Charleston. Somebody walking by with the name Ralph Isaacs. We don't have a Ralph on this group tonight. Don't get too excited. I know history is boring, but we got to tell no, him. I'm sorry. I see the yawn. I call him out every time. So, <laughs> no, I like history. But Ralph, he has the same initials as where the doctor came from. Ralph Isaacs, Rhode Island. R I shows up here all the time, but we need a secondary clue so we know who it belongs to. But anyway, Ralph says, "Dude, you don't want to stay in here. I know this guy's going to try to kill you. There's a gunman inside. I got some friends at 59 Church Street. You can rent a room from them, and you'll be good to go." The doctor takes him up on the offer, and the two become friends, and the doctor's safe. Now, the longer the doctor stays down here, the more money he's making because his medical practice is taking off. He's proving his point that he wasn't after Amanda's money. Amanda's also moving down soon. This doctor becomes known as the Whistling Doctor because he whistled all the time. Now, every haunted city you will ever visit in the future will have a cliched whistling ghost. I can almost guarantee it. However, we do have proof of this. So again, it is one of those pieces where I will talk about that at the end of the story. It's a ghost story. Made to be scared. This isn't the joke oh. around with. Him this and Ralph go see plays together, but they cannot sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. So they talk about these plays on the way home. They go see William the Third, arguing over the new actress that was in the play. The doctor thought she was great, Ralph not so much. It gets a little bit more heated when Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island and they go their separate ways. Ralph being from here has friends at the newspaper. He puts an ad in a paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Obviously kind of a jerk move. <laughs> Dr. Ladd sees the ad and revolts with, we're gonna go down to Dooler's Alley and settle this. So they come down, they take their 10 paces, they turn, the doctor points his gun in the air and he shoots. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, which is often what happened. But Ralph, he has his one shot, and he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. So the doctor drops to the ground, his friends pick him up, carry him home to 59 Church Street, and he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. You have to remember the guy's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed out this bullet himself. This is the late 1700s. So, the campfire part of the story, campfire ghost story, is that when you walk down the alley, you can actually hear the whistles from the doctor. Keep in mind, if you're going to do this on your own without me, because you're going to find out why I can't take you down here at the moment, turn on your voice recorders, but keep in mind, every local knows this story. Me and London literally throw a whistle down this alley every single night when we're done. So we're going to end up there. Our, our car is parked right there. We throw a whistle. Every local does it. If they're on the other side, Queen Street or Cumberland, they all throw a whistle down the alley. It's kind of a little tradition around town. So again, it's going to be very obvious like that. It's going to be very faint and in the background on your voice recorders. So here's how I got booted out of here. Here's the fun part. Making sure the neighbor's not here. So this alley didn't come all the way through before it became Dooler's Alley, which means this, there was a wall on this side and the bricks on the other side are older. Those, are, those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint and fingerprint swipes in those bricks at the end. I'm sure you guys realize by now I'm all about the history. I would still show them off as we walk through the alley just to show off the history of how far we've come. Now, there is that handprint. It's oh, one night. It was it November 26th of 2020. My entire group of 10 decided to huddle around that one brick with the handprint in it and try to get some kind of activity out of it. I treat those bricks the same way I do a grave. You're not going to get some kid staring at a brick in the afterlife and telling you how he feels about it. However, it is, it is right outside a gentleman's dining room window of his beautiful mansion. We 
weren't supposed to be there. We come out screaming, this one's laughing because dad's getting yelled at, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving, November 27th. The next day after that, November 28th, I get a phone call from the tourism office asking me to either go down halfway like everybody else or reroute the entire tour. I decide I'm going to reroute because, again, not fair for us to work around 20 to 60. I did not tell them what we were going to be investigating, nor did I even believe in the story, just so you know. I did not tell them we were going to be investigating pirates. Somebody hears the name Anne on a spirit box before we leave. We're going to investigate Anne Bonnie, the famous female pirate, which is where we're going next. I get up there and I tell what I did know about Anne Bonnie, kind of nonchalantly, because I don't know much at the time, and somebody else hears the number 300. I don't know what that means till I do the research the next day. But we were there on November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's trial for piracy was on November 28th of 1720, the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. Again, I will never forget this specific set of dates because of the way it happened. Very uncanny, but I keep taking you all back there in hopes that we're going to find more evidence of Anne Bonnie. Now, when we get up there, worst case scenario, because we are dealing with pirate lore, I have read a crap ton of books about pirates, and I'm a vampire guy, just so everybody knows. I'm not a pirate person by any means. But, if anything, you're going to learn a lot about pirates. It is a hit or miss location. We're either going to have a lot going on or nothing going on. And we're going to know very quickly that the story is very in depth we'll say that once we get up there what do we got going on with our devices before we actually move on to the next phase when you said you put an ad in the newspaper i heard show off show off interesting <laughs> i like that one what else do we have her said return said what return, return. when you were talking about the story about um that like when he got this. kicked out <laughs> yeah I, we're not going to be returning um <laughs> that's so bad yeah, he does not want me back down. Um, and what sucks is this is one of my most favorite places in Charleston. Again, it is always this serene and always this quiet. Even on a busy Saturday afternoon, it's very hard to hear the traffic from East Bay Street down there. It's gorgeous. So again, make sure you guys walk down there at some point. Um, we are going to be going up to the Powder Magazine now. Um, did anybody want to take a quick walk down there and maybe shoot a few pictures or do whatever you need to do? If you do, we're going to be going to see where that street corner. Do you want to go with him? Yeah. Okay, Money's going to go with you. <laughs> you got um, in trouble, she wants to get in trouble. Well, she, she just know that you can't go past the halfway point. Yeah, I know. All right, so we're going to head up to the powder magazine, the rest of us. And we're going to be discussing that little tiny building over there. I'm sure you noticed I brought us way to the back of the lot because other tours are going to be passing through. And again, I told you we're going to stay out of their way. So this building, the reason why we're here is this, this is what I call a familiar. So we dealt with an intelligent, a residual. Obviously, the active is with the uh, doctor, and this is a you know a familiar place. This building was actually being built at the same time that Anne Bonnie was coming to Charleston. This is the same type of principle of using a toy to attract a child ghost. So again, there's not many buildings here this old. So let me tell you about this building. We're going to get into the story. Powder magazine. First off, those are not crosses on the building, as you probably suspected initially. Those are earthquake bolts. If you don't know what earthquake bolts are, they're basically a turnbuckle. In the event we have another earthquake, like what we talked about at the beginning, which we haven't, by the way, you can turn those turnbuckles and it'll straighten the building back up again to resist some of the damage and hopefully fix any damage that was there. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. So, yeah, the reason I bring these up is because those earthquake bolts are the first ones that Charleston ever put in because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. This building was finished in 1713. So, we talked about the Charlestown walls earlier, like Charleston was called Charlestown, the walled city, where that garage is, that's where the wall stood. We're still inside the original Charlestown. It went up past the powder magazine, going up Cumberland, and going south towards the battery, putting the uh, powder magazine in the corners of the walls on purpose. If it gets attacked from pirate ships from three blocks away, the cannonball is going to have a hard time making it this far, first off. But if it does, the walls are 32 inches thick to protect the gunpowder inside. We're going to pretend that the cannonball made it and went all the way through, blew up the gunpowder. There's sand underneath those red shingles from the early 1700s during its construction that's supposed to go up in the air with the explosion and fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder. That's another great idea, but that doesn't work either. We had another powder magazine closer to the battery, much closer to the water, if you know our geography. It did get hit, the sand went up and the building burned to the ground. This one has just never been attacked, even though it served in seven different wars and one rebellion. The Civil War was its last servant, just so everybody knows. What are you so excited about over there, Sky? I've seen a big thing over there. The roof. I'm going to tell you why that's relevant to this space once and until I'm story. 
so that is huge. That's actually, she has the color I have red. Black earlier. That's also yeah. relevant. Oh, okay. We're yeah, going to be talking about pirates. What's the first thing you think of about black? Blackbeard. Black. Yeah. Blackbeard, exactly. Yeah. Blackbeard did spend some time in Charleston. Yeah. Black, Bless you. conflict, and ratio. All right, so we are here, again, because Anne Bonny knows this building. This building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? 10 years, small building? No, uh -huh. not at all. I'll answer for you. But the story actually begins right in the middle of its construction in 1708. You're going to have to follow me because there's a lot of twists on this one. Anne Cormac, a young lady, moves here from Ireland. She's with her father and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. So is everybody with me so far? Yes, sir. Okay, just making sure because there's, again, some weird twists. The three of them are running away from his wife. Just kind of how angry was she? Yes, they yeah. left Ireland to come here. They land in Georgetown. It's just north of here between us and Myrtle Beach. So dad buys a plantation, mom dies pretty quickly. That means he has to send young Anne down here to sell anything from the plantation to kind of keep things afloat. Now, Anne back home in Ireland was kind of a badass. They say she actually killed one of her servants with a knife to the belly when she was only 10 or 12 years old. That's yeah. Anne was only 10 or 12 years old. Keep that mentality of her as we go through the rest of the story. Now, fast forward, building's done in 1713. Pirates are coming through town in 1715. Anne's gonna fall in love because that's what Anne does. We're on guy number one. Yes, I'll keep tally, there's a handful. <laughs> First guy, James Bonney. You already see where this one's going. Dad doesn't approve, he's a filthy pirate. They run away to Jamaica, they get married, Anne Cormac becomes Anne Bonney, famous female pirate. Now, this guy is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she's looking for, right? So, this guy is a privateer. He is basically a spy for the British. This is not who she wants. She falls in love again a few years later, guy number two. His name is John Rackham, but everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the real pirate that they based Captain Jack Sparrow off of, just so everybody knows. Calico Jack has his own ship and wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on the crew because girls are bad luck. So he makes a deal with her. If you hide your gender by dressing like a guy, you can be part of the crew, but you're going to be a female in like quarters. She's okay with this because dad used to cross dress her as a boy back home in Ireland to hide her away from her wife, from his wife. So she's good with this. But most of us are adults here, except for Joseph. Let's put two and two together. Being a female in his quarters, she's eventually going to get pregnant. You cannot have a pregnant pirate guy on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's female. And obviously they're going to go after Jack and vote him off. So he sends her off to Cuba. We'll have the baby over here. I have some friends that will help you out. Come back and we'll figure it out later. She goes and has the baby, but returns with no baby. We have no idea what happened to this kid. There's no evidence anywhere of what happened to the child, but she's also dressed like a female. She does not give a damn anymore about hiding her gender. This makes Jack angry, but while she was away giving birth to his baby, he captured another pirate crew and they're down below deck. Anne's gonna go flirting with that crew because that's what Anne does. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two females dressed like males trying to be pirates. Her name is Mary Reed. So her and Mary become friends, possibly lovers, we're never going to know for certain, and the British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet of ships to come take down one pirate ship. Anne and Mary are the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flintlocks, probably because they don't know how to use the cannon jet. Obviously their ship's going to get taken, as, as they're being arrested, she looks at her captain, her beau, Calico Jack, and says, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog, the word dog being very prominent for your spirit boxes. The judge, his name is Nick as well, so if you guys hear my name on your spirit boxes, it's usually relative to him, not me. He wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly after he's tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunken pirates who wouldn't have fight. So Anne and Mary go in front, they reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves, but they're female, they can't hang people. He doesn't care, they're still pirates. We plead our bellies was the last thing they said, because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It is illegal. So he sends them both back to jail. Dad is still here in the Charlestown area. He, he has all of his Irish money because he was an attorney back home in Ireland. He brings Anne back home. Anne remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four, just so you guys know. Um, has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Yes, that's all we know about Anne after her pirate career. As far as Mary Reed goes, she died a year later in 1721 from whatever pirates died from. Anne only left out two questions here. On purpose. Again, we're dealing with pirate lore. The name of Anne Bonnie's parents. That would be the father and his mistress, and the name of Calico Jack's ship. Now, I will explain the color red here, because what I've been experimenting with is with Joe's device. Joe, you're not going to see a whole lot of numbers show up here, so we're going to play with the colors. What I normally ask with your device is, Anne, what color is your hair? And her being from Ireland, the color is red. So, we have the word red, and we've actually had the word red come up on your device in this location as well. 
Yeah, in this location. So again, I'm excited about red. However, the word black over here, there's a lot of things that go wrapped around black beer. So again, there's obviously black in beer. There's Edward in Teach, because that was his real name. Um, I don't remember, obviously Jolly and Roger, because he actually had the Jolly Roger at one point. There's a lot of things that wrap around black beer. The word black over here is relevant, but not yet. Kind of keep that in mind. Before I have you guys spread out and have fun with your devices and stay away from the other tours, I'm going to keep you for one more minute and tell you why I give the heated warning at the beginning of all of my tours. Back in September, not spelled wrong, um, <laughs> of last year, I brought my group back here and it was a hot night like it is for us tonight. The kid next to me, he goes white as a ghost. He's, and I call him a kid because he was probably 21 or 22 years old. I literally have to pick him up by his armpit so that way he doesn't hit his head on the ground. His boyfriend picks him up from the other side. We get him over to that wall to sit down, get him a bottle of water, he's feeling better. I then tell the story. It's important to know that he doesn't know what you all now know about Anne Bond. So afterwards, and I spread everybody out to go play with their devices, they pull me aside and say, Nick, we have to tell you, we are two transgender males. Meaning I had two females dressed as males on my tour, just like Anne and Mary. And it made complete sense to them as to why one of them passed out as we entered the space. So again, take that for what it is. These are the uncanny things that I see all the time. I've been doing the tours for three years, but I've been ghost hunting for 11. There's too many things I can't explain. So, those of you with cameras, you can exit the lot and make a left to go get some footage of the front of the powder magazine if you'd like, and yes, it does include lasers. As long as they stay on the ground of the powder magazine, because above it, our apartment building should be shining on somebody's television. Um, everybody else, like if you want to stay over here, if you want to go check out the front, the only thing that I ask is that you don't interrupt the other tours. You can see that they stop, tell a story, they move on. Just kind of wait your turn. Um, have we got anything from the spirit boxes before I kind of spread us all out? Besides black and red. And we're not playing roulette. I got right. Peter. What is it? Peter. I've got Eliza like three or four times. Mine is here's, so red right now, I don't know what that that's is. That's just part of the aesthetic. The reason why you're getting Eliza <laughs> over here is the husband is buried across the street. So we, we've been seeing more and more clues wrapped around Eliza. It's yeah, almost like he's telling us that Eliza the last part of the so I'll still use this. So it's just that um, so again, the fact that you have it, it's very unique, especially in this location because of what's across the street. Man, are you getting anything on there? Nothing. She's not a good listener for the spirit. Maybe you two should swap. Let you give okay. it a try. Do you want to listen? Yeah, because I know what they're listening for. All right. Um, I'm going to go hang out over there by the wall. You guys are going to come to me in the next five minutes or so, depending on what you're getting. If it's nothing, obviously, it's, oh, it's a hit or miss location. So that's where we'll wrap things up. I'll get you guys the answers. Again, the names of Ann's parents, the name of Calico Jack Ship. Anything else you want to ask is fair game. You guys know what the hell you're doing by now. We've spent enough time together, I think. So, if you don't know, ask Joseph. I'll tell you. He knows what's going on here. So, he's got the shirt and everything. What am I looking for? Right, let's have some fun. This is our last stop. What am I looking for? What do I do with this? What do I do with this? Is it recording? I think so. Yeah. So you just take your fingers in the way. Hey, am I looking for blue stuff?
debunked that one, didn't he? I just, I just heard work with the squad.